Welcome back to another episode of Space This Week, the show that drops every Monday, bringing you all the latest updates from SpaceX's Starship program, as well as a recap of all the best rocket launches and space news from the past week. And we have lots to cover today, from Scrappage at Starbase, Twin Falcon launches at the Cape, and both China and the United States prepared to send astronauts to the two Earth orbit space stations, but one of these missions will be the maiden crewed flight of Starliner. All of this and so much more, let's begin with Starship news. On the 20th of April, we had a momentous anniversary. That's right, can you believe it has been an entire year since the first flight of Starship? SpaceX celebrated the occasion with a post on Twitter, X. along with the statement that each successive launch has gone further, and with more flights coming soon, they're rapidly building towards a fully reasonable future. So how are things looking for Flight 4? Well, Sean Doherty and Boca Chica Gal of NASA Spaceflight caught glimpses of Ship 29 in the high bay, noticeably missing some of the heat shield tiles from one of its forward flaps, and this is following the recent removal and replacement of the tiles at the ship's nose. Other sections of the vehicle have had various tiles removed as well. All three flight tests that we've seen so far have had the ships shed a noticeable number of tiles during flight, though the number has been going down with each subsequent launch. We're not sure why these tiles in particular were removed, but it looks like SpaceX are definitely doing something with the tiles before Flight 4, most likely toughening up the attachment points. I wonder if Ship 30 will need to have its tiles replaced to the same extent. Right now its tile work is looking pretty complete, and looking very clean if I do say so myself. It's currently sitting in Mega Bay 2, which can be more easily seen from the public highway. Work continues preparing Stage 0 for Flight 4 as well. SpaceX are continuing to replace the launch clamp linkages on the orbital launch mount, and work has continued the installation of the new upgraded actuators on the chopsticks, which should allow them to operate much faster, something that should be very helpful if SpaceX really do attempt a first catch as early as Flight 5, something Elon Musk stated would be an objective if Flight 4's Super Heavy succeeds in its soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico. The new actuators were tested later on in the week, and yep, the, uh, the arms seem able to move. Hopefully the performance was up to scratch. The booster quick disconnect also saw some work. Some hosing was removed overnight, which is curious, as the internal hosing of the booster quick disconnect was removed and replaced already following Flight 3, so not quite sure why it's being changed again. The skyline at the launch site is about to undergo some pretty drastic changes. For starters, Earthwork is ramping up to pave the way for the construction of a second launch and catch tower for Starship, and the old vertical tank farm saw the beginning of the end for ground support equipment Tank 6. Its outer shell was cut up and then partially removed, with continued scrappage ongoing. So yeah, it's going to be a few more weeks at least before SpaceX will be ready for Starship's fourth flight test, but it's still fun watching SpaceX continue transforming this little spit of land into the gateway to Mars. Seeing two launch towers is going to be insane. As for orbital rocket launches, this past week has been somewhat quiet. I only have three to talk about. There's never a week where SpaceX don't launch at least one Falcon 9, and last week was no exception. We saw two launches one day apart from each other, and both from the same space center, though different launch pads. The first launch was Starlink Group 6-51, which lifted off on Wednesday from launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, carrying 23 Starlinks to Shell 6. The Falcon's first stage landed on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean following stage separation, completing this booster's 12th overall flight. The second Falcon 9 launch was another Starlink mission, Group 6-52, which launched from Launch Complex 40 at the Cape. The rocket was once again carrying 23 Starlink satellites to orbit, and following stage separation, the Falcon 9 first stage successfully landed on the drone ship a short fall of Gravitas, completing its seventh overall mission. Now, unfortunately, the stream cut out for the landing itself, so the only shot we have is the booster on the deck after completing its touchdown. The only other orbital launch of the week came from China. On Saturday, Long March 2D launched the Yaogan 4202 to low Earth orbit from the Zichang Launch Complex in southwest China. The Yaogan satellites are China's remote sensing reconnaissance satellites, and official sources have stated that the payload has entered its preset orbit. Speaking of China's space program though, they're getting ready to launch the next crew rotation to their space station. A Long March 2F was rolled out to the launch pad on Wednesday last week as it prepares to launch the seventh trio of astronauts to China's space station. If you think this rocket looks a bit like the Soyuz, 
Uh, that's because it basically is one. The Long March 2F is essentially a clone. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Soyuz is one of the most dependable rockets in the business. Funnily enough, China is about to launch a clone of another rocket. Say hello to their Not a Falcon 9 Tianlong 3, set to launch for the first time this summer. And yes, it will do the Falcon 9 trick of propulsively landing its first stage, though the maiden flight won't see the rocket sporting any landing legs. Now, let's talk about sending crewed missions to space. Right now, there are three vehicles that can take you there, Soyuz, Shenzhou, and Crew Dragon. And I guess technically VSS, Unity, and New Shepard, but those don't go to orbit, so they don't count. Oh, and I guess there's Orion, too? But that doesn't exactly fly regularly. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic. We're about to see the debut of a new crew vehicle. Yep, after many delays and mishaps, Boeing Starliner is finally ready to fly crew to the International Space Station for the first time. Now, a lot of people don't seem to recall that this isn't actually Starliner's maiden flight. It has already made the trip to the International Space Station uncrewed. Well, unless you count Jebediah Kerman as a crew member. But this will be Starliner's first time carrying astronauts. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. Last Tuesday, the capsule was rolled out and transported to United Launch Alliance's vertical integration facility at Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral, when it was then lifted and connected to the Atlas V rocket for launch no earlier than Monday the 6th of May. So two weeks time, if there are no further delays. NASA has shared an interesting pair of images for its Artemis program, specifically to highlight that work is underway on large cargo landers for the moon's surface missions. It's worth mentioning that both of these lander designs are purely for cargo, they won't be carrying humans. This is, obviously, SpaceX's design, another update to this moon ship render, now showing how the cargo bay will open and seemingly feature a crane mechanism to lower down some rather beefy looking moon rovers. There are three in this shot, I don't know if that's just for artistic license or actually a signal that the moonship has capacity for three rovers, I'm not sure if there's much benefit to having three separate rovers to be fair either. <laughs> The other design showcased is Blue Origins, which is much smaller but equally capable of carrying a large rover down to the lunar surface. I actually really, really like the look of this lander. It's very reminiscent of the Apollo lander, but still looking souped up and futuristic. I can't wait for Artemis to enter its moon landing phase. We're going to see some amazing launches for sure. Now, bit of a meta bit this part, but I'm just putting a PSA out there that there isn't going to be a space this week next Monday because I'm going to be away. So apologies for that. There's not going to be a video next Monday. Hopefully nothing major happens over the next seven days and that it's not too much of a blow. I don't know what I'm going to put on screen for this bit, so uh, I hope whatever I decided to show was entertaining. <laughs> Laon Aerospace was once again launching stuff last week. More than one launch actually. We actually launched more times to orbit than SpaceX last week, so there's that. <laughs> this was my ambitious multi-launch mission to colonize the MUN in KSP2, and boy, there were a lot of Kraken attacks. So hey, if the mission, or laughing at my suffering, sounds entertaining, then there should now be two videos on screen. You can click one of them, being that aforementioned MUN mission. You can also see the names of my Patreon supporters on the left there, who make all of this content possible, so huge thanks to all of you. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and that you have an excellent week. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know how to side off videos. I'm still so awkward, despite doing this so long. Like